Within various phases of the Holocaust, the trains were employed differently. At first, they were used to concentrate the Jewish populations in the ghettos, and often to transport them to forced labor and German concentration camps for the purpose of economic exploitation. The European rail network played a crucial role in the implementation of the final solution. Jews from Germany and German-occupied Europe were deported by rail to the killing centers in German-occupied Poland. The Germans attempted to disguise their deadly intentions, referring to these deportations as resettlement to the East. Deportations on this scale required the coordination of numerous German government ministries and state organizations, including the Reich Security Main Office, the Transport Ministry, and the Foreign Office. The, the Reich Security Main Office coordinated and directed the deportations. The Transport Ministry organized train schedules, and the Foreign Office negotiated with German allied states about handing over their Jews. Without food or water, Many deportees died before the trains reached their destinations. Armed guards shot anyone trying to escape. Between the fall of 1941 and the fall of 1944, millions of people were transported by rail to the killing centers and other killing sites in German-occupied Poland and the occupied Soviet Union. The first mass deportation of Jews from Nazi Germany the Poland action occurred in October 1938. It was the forcible eviction of German Jews with Polish citizenship fueled by the Kristallnacht. Approximately 30,000 Jews were rounded up and sent via rail to refugee camps. Today, we are going to visit the rests of those rails that once sent people to their death. Many of these rails Bridges and some buildings have already taken over by nature, and we have to get inside the woods to see them. We are near the station of York Street in Berlin. This station was a very busy one since its creation. It had many rail bridges that point in every direction to assure the continuous flow of goods throughout all Germany. And because of that and the effectiveness of the German Imperial Railway, Thousands were deported in such a fast manner to ghettos, and then from the ghettos to the camps. On January 20, 1942, in Berlin, to coordinate the implementation of the proposed final solution, the SS estimated that the final solution, which was already underway, would ultimately involve 11 million European Jews. Nazi planners envisioned the inclusion of Jews living in neutral, or non-occupied countries such as Ireland, Sweden, Turkey, and Great Britain. The European rail network played a crucial role in the implementation of the final solution. Jews from Germany and German-occupied Europe were deported by rail to the killing centers in German-occupied Poland. The victims were told they were being taken to labor camps, but in reality, from 1942, deportation for most Jews meant transit to killing centers. The Germans used both freight and passenger cars for the deportations. They did not provide the deportees with food or water, even when the transports had to wait days on railroad spurs for other trains to pass. The people deported in sealed freight cars suffered from intense heat in summer, freezing temperatures in winter, and the stench of urine and excrement. Most Jews were forced to pay for their own deportations, particularly wherever passenger carriages were used. This payment came in the form of direct money deposit to the SS in light of the resettlement to work in the East Myth. Charged in the ghettos for accommodation, adult Jews paid full price one-way tickets, while children under 10 to 12 years of age paid half price and those under four went free. Jews who had run out of money were the first to be deported. As well as transporting German Jews, the Imperial German Rail was responsible for coordinating transports on the rail networks of occupied territories and Germany's allies. The characteristics of organized concentration and transportation of victims of the Holocaust varied by country. 
After Germany invaded Belgium on May 10, 1940, all Jews were forced to register with the police as of October 28, 1940. The lists enabled Belgium to become the first country in occupied Western Europe to deport recently immigrating Jews. Bulgaria joined the Axis powers in March 1941 and took part in the invasion of Yugoslavia and Greece. The Bulgarian government set up transit camps in Skopje, Ligovgrad and Dipnitsa for the Jews from the former Serbian province of Vardar Banovina and Thrash. The deportations to the east of 13,000 inmates, mostly to Treblinka extermination camp began on February 22, 1943. In Czechoslovakia, three quarters of Bohemian and Moravian Jews were murdered in the Holocaust, of whom 33,000 died in their Zinzintat ghetto. The remainder were transported in Holocaust trains from their Zinzitat, mainly to Auschwitz-Birkenau. The last train for Birkenau left their Zinzintat ghetto on October 28, 1944, with 2,038 Jews of whom 1,589 were immediately gassed. The French National SNCF Railway Company, under the Vichy government, was also involved in the final solution. In total, the Vichy government deported more than 76,000 Jews. Without food or weight, as well as thousands of other so-called undesirables to German-built concentration and extermination camps. Greece was divided between the Italian, Bulgarian, and German zones of occupation until September 1943, from there 45,000 Jews were sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau between March and August 1943. The non-native Jews were expelled from the Hungarian territory some 20,000 were transported to occupied Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia, while the Transylvanian Jews were sent back to Romania. Hungary took part in Operation Barbarossa, supplying 50,000 Jewish slave labor for the Eastern Front. Most of the workers were dead by January 1943. Later that year, Hitler discovered that Prime Minister Miklos Kele secretly conferred with the Western Allies. The popular view that Benito Mussolini resisted the deportation of Italian Jews to Germany is widely seen as simplistic by Jewish scholars because the Italian Jewish community of 47,000 constituted the most assimilated Jews in Europe. About one out of every three Jewish males were members of the fascist party before the war began. More than 10,000 Jews who used to conceal their identity because anti-Semitism was part of the very ideal of Italy. The Netherlands was invaded on May 10, 1940 and fell under German military control. The community of native Dutch Jews, including the new Jewish refugees from Germany and Austria, was estimated, who were sent to Westerbork perished. Norway surrendered to Nazi Germany on June 10, 1940. At the time, there were 1,700 Jews living in Norway. About half of them escaped to neutral Sweden. Roundups by the SS began in the fall of 1942 with the support of the Norwegian police. In late November 1942, all Jews of Oslo, including women and children, were put on a ship requisition by the Quisling government and taken to Hamburg, Germany. In Poland, some 265,000 Jews were transported in freight trains from the Warsaw Ghetto to Treblinka during this period. The murder operation code, named Grisakchen Warsaw, concluded several months before the subsequent Warsaw Ghetto uprising resulting in new deportations. In Romania, Jews were forcibly loaded onto freight cars with planks hammered in place over the windows and traveled for seven days in unimaginable conditions. Many died and were gravely affected by lack of air, blistering heat, lack of water, food, or medical attention. These veritable death trains arrived to their destinations. Podu and Klarashi with only one-fifth of their passengers alive. 
Slovakia was the only Axis ally to pay for the deportation of its own Jewish population. Most of the Jewish population perished in two waves of deportations. The first, in 1942, took away two-thirds of the Slovak Jews. The second wave after the Slovak national uprising in 1944 claimed another 13,500 victims, 10,000 of whom did not return. We should never forget what it means to hate for religion or political affiliation. Nothing is more valuable than human life, and nothing that became part of our history, even if it meant death and destruction, should not be forgotten. May God rest each one of our fallen brothers and sisters.